Hi, it's Brian. I returned from the Telluride Film Festival a few days ago. I've given you reviews so far on Poor Things, Saltburn, and Nyad. And today I am very excited to bring you my review of Andrew Haig's newest film, All of Us Strangers, starring Andrew Scott and Paul Meskel. I have been a huge Andrew Haig fan ever since his debut feature Weekend, which came out, I believe, in 2011. I remember renting the Criterion disc of that film, not knowing much about it, and it just blew me away. I watched it twice that weekend. I had rented it because it was so good. It spoke to me so much as a gay person. I hadn't really seen an LGBTQ film quite like that one. It's so tender, so well acted, so real every single scene of that movie. It was just so real. You could tell this was coming from life experience. And I was just so appreciative for Andrew Haig to share his heart and soul with us like that. And so ever since I saw Weekend, I've been keeping track of what Andrew Haig is doing. I'm always intrigued by his next project, whether it's for television or for film. I really loved Looking, which I believe had only two seasons, maybe it was three. And then there was that final movie that came out. Looking on HBO was a show I never missed. I love that cast, the writing, the direction. And then his films since Weekend have been great. I loved 45 Years from 2015. The one time so far an Andrew Haig film has made it into the Oscars, Charlotte Rampling was one of those delightful last minute surprises. She made it into the best actress category the year that Brie Larson won. And I can't remember if Charlotte Rampling had gotten in anywhere else, like any of the other big award shows. There might have been one precursor she made it in beforehand, but that was kind of like a last minute surprise on Oscar nominations morning. So well deserved. 45 Years is a beautiful film. And I still think about that last scene, that last shot all the time. Like the way the camera moves, the music, her face what she does at the very end. It's just so devastating. I love that Oscar nomination and I love that film. And then I would say maybe his most under the radar film is Lean on Pete. That is another great find. Very quiet film, but well acted, also devastating. Like Andrew Haig always has the ability to make me cry. There has not been a film he's made so far that did not make me tear up at least a little bit. Lean on Pete is a terrific film. Check it out if you haven't seen it. And then that came out, I want to say like 2018. It's been like, it's been a while. Like we haven't had a new Andrew Haig film in a few years. So as soon as I heard about All of the Strangers, I saw its amazing cast. I saw it's another LGBTQ story and that it had a surreal aspect to it. I was like, ooh, this could be cool. And then I saw over the summer, it was coming out in December and I wasn't sure if it was playing at any of the festivals I had known for almost a year now that I was going to Telluride. And it just, I didn't think it was going to go there. I thought, well, if it's coming out at the end of December, it's probably going to play like New York or AFI Fest in Los Angeles. So when I heard that it was premiering at Telluride, oh my God, I got so excited. I was like, holy shit, like Andrew Haig is going to be there. I'm going to be a part of one of the first audiences to see this movie. And I saw it like at the second or third screening at Telluride, so the buzz was already growing. I had been hearing great things, like nothing negative about this movie. So I went in with very high expectations, and they were met. All of Us Strangers is such a deeply personal, unique vision that only, I believe, Andrew Haig could have made. And what I find really exciting about this film is that Haig pushes himself as a filmmaker more so than he ever has before. He's taking on a story that has this surreal aspect to it that you kind of have to go with. The first scene in the movie where you're like, wait, what's happening here? Like, who is our main character sitting down to have a conversation with? Is this really happening? And part of me kind of wonders right now, will general audiences go with this? Because I could see some people being like, no, this is dumb. <laughs> like I could see some people down the road being like, this doesn't work. But I loved it. Everyone I've talked to loved it. The audience at Telluride just went berserk for this movie. So I think that aspect is gonna work okay for general audiences. 
What is this element I'm talking about? Well, I kind of have to spoil it for you because there's no way to really talk about this movie without telling you what happens 20 to 30 minutes in. This is not like something that happens at the very end of the film. There hasn't been a trailer of All of Us Strangers yet, but I'm sure it will be given away in the trailer. Like, I don't know how you really promote this movie, talk about this movie without telling you the main idea at its core. So the film stars Andrew Scott from Fleabag as Adam. He is a screenwriter living in London. He's kind of a loner. He doesn't have any friends. And one day there is a knock at his door. And on the other side stands Harry, played by Paul Meskel, who's like, hey, I've kind of seen you around the building. You want to hang out? Maybe have a drink? And is like clearly flirting with him. And Adam is like clearly taken with him a little bit, but on that first encounter, Adam says, no, no, no thanks. Not a good idea. But there's clearly a connection between the two, so they're gonna come back around to each other. Adam is searching for ideas in his writing, and he goes on lots of long walks. And at one point, he goes for a walk out to this middle of nowhere field, and there's this guy who looks about the same age as Adam, who kind of gives him a look, and Adam follows him into a neighborhood. And so you kind of think, oh, this is going to be some sort of sexual encounter. <laughs> but then he goes into the house and he says, hi, dad. Hi, mom. And Jamie Bell plays his father and Claire Foy plays his mother. But they're not older. They're about his age. And you come to find out that Adam's parents died in a car accident many, many, many years ago when Adam was a kid. But now he's reuniting with them again at the age they were when they died. And it's like they're picking up their relationship where it left off many decades before. But the film does not treat the parents as ghosts, really. Like, they are treated as real people, as if everybody else in the world would be able to see them. And Adam is just appreciative that he can have this time with his parents again. The movie does not treat him like he's insane or anything. He just happens to go for these walks and have nice long conversations with his parents, even though they died many years ago. And so that's the element of the movie you kind of have to go with. If that is just too weird for you and you're just like, what? Like, the movie will not work. I think if Andrew Haig had treated the parents as ghosts, the movie just would have been too weird. But because he treats all of this as reality, it does bring the movie an authenticity and emotion that really does work by the second half. Once you get into the movie's pacing, its groove, and you're like, okay, I see what Haig is doing here what he's touching on here, this idea of being able to reconnect with people in your life that you love, who you might have lost many years ago, but now have this ability to continue the conversation. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a film before that tackles grief and death and family drama in this way. It's really unique. And Haig brings his directorial standpoint on this movie in a beautiful way, because something that also is really effective about the film is that the family elements is only about half of the narrative. The other half is this gorgeous, authentic LGBTQ story between Adam and Harry that slowly evolves from like a sexual relationship into this really lovely connection between two men who are kind of adrift and just want something to look forward to in their lives. In the first half hour of the movie, Harry apologizes at one point to Adam. He's like, hey, sorry about the thing in the hallway. I won't do that again. But Adam's like, no, no, come back, come back up. Now Adam is ready to have some time with Harry. I mean, I think any gay man in the world would come around to wanting to spend time with Paul Meskel in their apartment, am I right? In this movie, we get a couple explicit, but very tasteful at the same time, love scenes between Meskel and Scott that are fantastic. And then the way that their relationship evolves throughout the movie as Adam is trying to come to terms with his parents' death and having that connection with them again. It's just a very interesting narrative of two stories that you'd think at first wouldn't really connect to each other, but by the end of the film, they really do. They really speak to each other, especially in Adam's growth throughout the film. I'm not sure if this movie can get into like best picture, best director. I feel like it's a little bit too quiet for that. Like it's not gonna have as big as an impact on everybody as it absolutely did on me. 
and many people at Telluride. Like, I feel like it might be a little bit too under the radar, I don't know. But I do think, finally, after many years, Andrew Haig is going to get his first Oscar nomination in the Best Adapted Screenplay category. I think that's going to happen. I cannot imagine this movie, especially with it coming out in December and the rave reviews it's gotten, I cannot imagine it not making it into Best Adapted Screenplay. That's definitely happening. The other big Oscar nomination that I think could happen with this movie if there wasn't so much competition, but Andrew Scott in the lead role is spectacular. This is absolutely one of the best male performances I have seen in a 2023 film. Andrew Scott in All of Us Strangers is so devastating, is so real. His chemistry with Paul Meskel is lovely. His scenes with Jamie Bell and Claire Foy really transcend some of the absurdities of the situation like Andrew Scott's performance really makes that part of the movie work. If the Scott performance weren't up to par, you might find some of those scenes with the parents kind of silly, but Andrew Scott sells it. He makes this movie as great as it is. I mean, I've seen him pop up in a film here and there. He was so good on Fleabag. This is his best role in a film to date for sure. I would love to see him get into the best actor race. I would hope he gets nominated somewhere. This is too good of a performance to be ignored. I really, really, really hope Andrew Scott plays some sort of role in award season next year in the best actor category. Paul Meskel, I would say, has a shot at best supporting actor, but I feel like there's not that one scene in the movie where he really gets a chance to pop. I mean, maybe the end of the film, which I won't give away here, but because of his Oscar nomination for After Sun, we have to keep his name in the conversation, and it would be a worthy Oscar nod. He's also very good in this. He's so sexy in this, guys. Oh my god, <laughs> like Paul Meskel in this movie. You're like, like, Paul Meskel in All of the Strangers was a bit too much for me, let me just tell you. <laughs> and then Jamie Bell and Claire Foy are good. I would say the weak link of the movie is the Jamie Bell performance. I don't know what it was. There was just something a little bit off with his physical appearance and the mustache. And I felt like that role could have been played by someone with a little bit more presence. I don't know what it is, but Jamie Bell in this movie, I found to be a little bit of a blank. Claire Foy is much better. There is this one amazing scene where Adam comes out to her. Excellent balance between the two actors. Claire Foy is very good in this movie. I think she's a lot better than Jamie Bell. The technicals in this are wonderful. Once again, Andrew Haig has cobbled together an amazing soundtrack. I love the way he uses music in his movies. Sometimes it's songs that we recognize. Like the way he used Smoke Gets In Your Eyes in 45 Years. Get ready for how he uses Always On My Mind in a Christmas scene. That is definitely one of the moments in the film I got teary-eyed. That is one of my favorite songs of all time and the way he uses it in the scene. It's very emotional. It's heartbreaking. Ugh, that moment is fantastic. The cinematography, as expected, is beautiful. I love the production design and how it kind of balances the different time periods. That works really well. To be perfectly honest, the twist ending, which I won't give away, the very last scene, I've still been kind of going back and forth about. Like, I kind of saw it coming, maybe at the halfway point of the movie. I thought, hmm, this might be what happens at the end. And it did, and the way it's handled is very beautiful, but it also creates this additional surreal nature to the movie that actually made me not as expectedly emotional at the end. I was prepared to be crying my eyes out in the last five minutes. Part of me was like, I don't really care where Andrew Haig goes here at the very end, I'm sure I'll be crying. I got teary-eyed at a couple individual moments throughout the movie, but the very last scene did not break me like it apparently did for some other viewers. I was too hung up on the twist ending itself and just trying to figure out exactly what had happened. So I feel like on my second viewing of All of Us Strangers, that part will work better for me. But on the first viewing, I was using too much of my head in that last scene, not enough of my heart, which is unusual for an Andrew Haig film. Usually the last scene of an Andrew Haig film has me bawling. 
but that part did not, at least on the first viewing. So I'm hoping it works better when I see this film again, which I will absolutely do when it opens in theaters. But as a whole, All of Us Strangers is one of the great films of 2023. This is a beautiful piece of art. I can't wait to watch again and again. Andrew Haig is one of our great filmmakers. I love this guy. I will follow him wherever he wants to go. Again, I really do think he is finally going to receive his first Oscar nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay. And Andrew Scott, I would love to see get into the Best Actor race, if not at the Oscars, like somewhere. BAFTA, like give him a nomination somewhere. He is excellent in this film. So yeah, if you're a fan of Andrew Haig's work, if you love this cast, like you are in for a treat. This is an outstanding film, a wonderful piece of cinema. I give All of Us Strangers an 8.5 out of 10. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And stay tuned in the coming days for more reviews from the Telluride Film Festival, including Rustin, The Holdovers, and Anatomy of a Fall. We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.